Good morning, folks. We've got space weather analysis as always. We'll look at the sun, active regions, solar wind, and a solar flare that just happened right before the show. We've got science news to hit as well from here at Earth and out into space, and we'll start with our star. The last 24 hours included two notable events. First, the incoming limb continued its eruptive activity as the filaments continued destabilizing and producing minor to moderate CMEs. Luckily, this latest one does not appear that it is aimed at Earth. We will, of course, be watching today for a glancing blow impact of a previously released filament, as well as monitoring the apparent enhancement of the solar wind due to the coronal hole stream. Here this morning, it appears the enhancement is beginning at low levels, with a slight rise in the KP index overnight and signatures of slightly faster solar wind in the stream. Watching for the combined effects of that stream and that filament expected to pass Earth today. Sunspots are becoming more numerous again. We've got the incoming groups, but the larger one south near the center released an M-class solar flare this morning. So not only will we be monitoring geospace, but the active regions and filaments as well for further eruptive activity. First article today reviews the GPS impacts of one of the stronger solar storms of the last cycle. GPS degradation was a key impact to the space weather event, furthering the understanding of how critical infrastructure is modulated by these geomagnetic storms and hinting at the grander impacts to come of bigger ones. Only point of frustration is how long it takes these studies to come out. This event was eight years ago. Interesting weather event in Florida as an ultra-rare hailstorm pounded the Atlantic coast. Storms of this intensity and oddity are becoming less uncommon. While mainstream media will always blame climate change, there are several excellent studies on the increase in hail due to cosmic ray forcing, which is long-term on the rise due to Earth's weakening magnetic field. Lastly here, folks, they found a way to keep Voyager 2 fully up and running after the original plan was to begin allowing science instruments to lose power and turn off as early as this year. They do expect now we'll get another three years out of it and expect to make the same move with Voyager 1. Any little bit more of science they can deliver at the solar system scale is worthwhile as they now are directly between the outer heliosphere and the galactic center and can give us information about the galactic current sheet. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more and check out our resources at the links in the description box below the video. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.